In this video, we will discuss ischemic stroke, its pathophysiology, etiology, clinical features, investigations, and a treatment of ischemic stroke. 85% of strokes are ischemic. Ischemic stroke is the third most common cause of death, and 30 to 50% of patients become disabled. Reduction in blood flow for a few seconds causes cerebral ischemia. Why? Because neurons lack glycogen, so energy failure is rapid. Complete obstruction to cerebral blood flow causes neurons death in 4 to 10 minutes. What are the effects produced by thromboembolic occlusion? Thromboembolic occlusion leads to ischemia that causes decreased oxygen supply to the neurons. Anaerobic metabolism leads to accumulation of lactate and number 2 increase in hydrogen ion concentration. Number 3 depletion of ATP causes failure of energy dependent membrane bound ionic pump leading to increase in intracellular calcium, cytotoxic edema and releasing glutamate. How glutamate causes neurotoxicity? Glutamate increases intracellular influx of calcium. Increased hydrogen ion concentration facilitates the generation of free radicals which cause brain damage by astroglial injury. How autoregulation of cerebral blood flow is controlled? Cerebral blood flow Autoregulation occurs between the blood pressure of 60 to 150 millimeters of mercury. Why? Due to smooth muscle contraction and relaxation, depending on cerebral perfusion pressure. When cerebral perfusion pressure increases, smooth muscle contract, and when cerebral perfusion pressure decreases, smooth muscle relax. If cerebral perfusion pressure decreases, it causes ischemia, and if cerebral perfusion pressure increases, it causes edema. What's hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy? Severe hypoxia causes widespread brain injury leading to brain damage and stroke. Where does the blood loss and cardiogenic shock causes infarction in the brain? Cardiogenic shock and blood loss causes syncope but if syncope persists longer it may cause infarction in the borderline area of the cerebral blood vessel distribution. What are the causes of reduction in cerebral blood flow? Number one, generalized disorders, hemorrhage, severe hypotension, shock and dehydration. Number two, disorders of heart, cardiac arrhythmias, myocardial infarction and cardiogenic shock. And number three, thromboembolic occlusion of a major artery or its branch by a detached thrombo from peripheral sites like heart, lung, or carotid artery. What are the risk factors for acute ischemic stroke? Thromboembolic occlusion, diabetes, obesity, atrial fibrillation, carotid artery stenosis, sickle cell disease, cigarette smoking, and in women, postmenopausal hormone therapy. What's cardioembolic stroke? A stroke caused by heart disease due to embolism of thrombotic material formed on the atrial or ventricular wall or the heart valves. What are the cardiac causes of ischemic stroke? Atrial fibrillation, ventricular aneurysms, endocarditis, and vegetation from cardiac valves and prosthesis. What's the most common cardiac cause of ischemic strokes? Atrial fibrillation is the most common cause of cerebral embolism, which abnormality causes stroke-like clinical features. Patients with fever or sepsis manifest hemiparesis, which clears when the infection is controlled. Clinical features of a stroke. Abrupt onset focal neurologic symptoms are typical of ischemic stroke. Ischemic stroke is most often due to embolic occlusion of a major cerebral artery. And what's a lacunar infarct? Lacunar infarct is an infarct due to occlusion of a branch of major cerebral artery or by occlusion of a small cerebral artery. Lacunar infarct account for 20% of all strokes. The general feature features of ischemic stroke. Anterior cerebral artery occlusion produces paralysis of foot and leg with sensory loss with or without paresis of the arm. Number two, gas and sucking reflexes and urinary incontinence. So anterior cerebral artery occlusion produces paralysis of foot and leg with sensory loss with or without 
paresis of the arm, gas pen sucking reflexes, and urinary incontinence. The posterior cerebral artery. In 75% of cases, it arises from bifurcation of the basilar artery, and in 20% of cases, the posterior cerebral artery arises from ipsilateral internal carotid artery. Posterior cerebral artery occlusion produces two syndromes. Syndrome 1 involves ipsilateral subthalamus, medial thalamus, cerebral peduncles, and the midbrain. It causes Claude and Weber syndrome, which we already discussed, and we have a video on that, so please watch them. And it also causes Dijerine Rousey syndrome. The posterior cerebral, this syndrome produces third nerve palsy and contralateral hemiplegia or vertical gaze paralysis. The Dijerine Rousey syndrome initially causes contralateral hemisensory loss, but later it's followed by agonizing, shearing, burning pain. This pain of Tijerine Rousey syndrome does not respond to analgesics but responds to anticonvulsants like carbamazepine and gabapentin or tricyclic antidepressants. The second syndrome is due to occlusion of the distal posterior cerebral artery that supplies medial temporal and occipital lobe causing contralateral homonymous hemianopsia with macular spearing. Why there is macular spearing in posterior cerebral artery occlusion. Macular region of the visual cortex is supplied by both posterior cerebral and middle cerebral artery branches. So a posterior cerebral artery lesion spares the macular vision. Number two, there is temporary memory loss in distal posterior cerebral artery occlusion and this is due to hippocampus involvement and why it's temporary because memory has a bilateral representation if dominant division is involved then infarction causes alexia without agraphia and visual agnosia for faces objects and for numbers. So the posterior cerebral artery, distal division involvement. The posterior part of posterior cerebral artery occlusion produces homonymous hemianopsia and cortical blindness, whereas the bilateral infarction in the distal posterior cerebral artery causes cortical blindness with preservation of pupillary light reflect. Why preservation of the light reflect? Because the optic tract innervates the edinger westfall nucleus via tectum. We already discussed in the other videos. Occlusion of the middle cerebral artery is the most common cause of ischemic stroke. Occlusion of the middle cerebral artery may be complete or partial. So it may produce both complete and partial lesions. The middle cerebral artery occlusion produces contralateral hemiplegia hemianesthesia, facial weakness, dysartria, and homonymous hemianopia or quadrantinopia. So the feature for middle cerebral artery occlusion are contralateral hemiplegia, hemianesthesia, facial weakness, dysartria, and hemianopia or quadrinopia. If dominant side is involved due to middle cerebral artery occlusion, it causes global aphasia. But if non-dominant side is involved, it causes anosognosia and neglect. Middle cerebral artery brain occlusion. What does it cause? It causes partial syndrome that includes hand arm weakness or facial weakness with aphasia. If superior division of middle cerebral artery is involved, then it causes sensory motor stroke with aphasia. So superior division of the middle cerebral, sensory motor stroke with aphasia. Whereas if inferior division of middle cerebral artery is involved, that supplies posterior temporal cortex, it causes vernix aphasia without weakness. Inferior division, vernix aphasia without weakness. Superior division of middle cerebral artery sensory motor stroke now the basilar artery occlusion we have already discussed it in other video the locked in syndrome it involves the long track it produces facial paralysis coma it produces horizontal gaze palsy because horizontal gaze center in the palms hemifacial sensory deficits and harness syndrome the internal carotid artery supplies the optic nerve and retina occlusion of the ophthalmic artery causes transient recurrent mono blindness that is called amaurosis fugex. Patient describes it as a horizontal shades moving up and down. So ophthalmic artery, branch internal carotid artery, occlusion causes 
temporary recurrent blindness known as amaurosis fuge. Patient describing it as horizontal shades moving up and down. And in carotid stenosis, there is carotid bruise. Now, lacunar infarct. Lacunar infarct is an infarct due to occlusion of a branch of major cerebral artery or occlusion of a small cerebral artery. Lacunar infarcts account for 20% of all strokes. What's the most common site of occlusion in lacunar infarct? The most common site of occlusion are basal ganglia, particularly putamen and the internal capsule. Which arterial occlusion most commonly causes lacunar infarcts? Lenticulo striate arteries are the proximal penetrating branches of the middle cerebral artery and they supply basal ganglia, globus pallidus, corona radiata and a posterior limb of the internal capsule. The anterior limb of the internal capsule is supplied by the anterior cerebral artery. Middle cerebral artery also supplies the anterior limb of the internal capsule. So anterior limb is supplied by both anterior and middle cerebral arteries. What are the clinical features of lacunar infarct of the lenticulostri Artery. The clinical features depend on the location of occlusion of these arteries. The lenticulostriate artery occlusion produces pure motor or sensory motor stroke on the contralateral side. Number one, pure motor hemiparesis of the face, arm and leg. Why? Due to occlusion of the posterior limb of the internal capsule. Number two, it may produce sensory motor stroke on the contralateral side if it involves thalamus. Number three, it may produce sensory lacunar infarct due to occlusion of the ventral thalamus. And number four, occlusion in the genome. What are the features of an infarct in genome? An infarct in genome first produces facial weakness, then it produces weakness of the arm and then it produces weakness of the lower limb as the lesion extends posteriorly in the internal capsule or alternatively an infarct in genome can produce clumsy hands and dysarthria. So what about the globus pallidus and putamen? Ischemic infarcts of the globus pallidus and putamen produce few clinical features but it may cause Parkinsonism and hemibilismus. Which brain structure edema increases intracranial pressure and what are the dangers of that? Number one, cerebral edema causes obtundation or brain herniation. Number two, small cerebellar edema acutely increases intracranial pressure and that compresses the brain stem. So what are the effects of brain stem compression? Brain stem compression causes coma and respiratory arrest. When does edema peaks? Edema peaks on the second day but the effect lasts for 10 days. Which brain structure infarct mimics labyrinthitis? Cerebellar infarction, Presents with posterior headache, vomiting, vertigo and that mimic labyrinthitis. The investigation and treatment of the stroke. CT scan differentiates ischemic stroke from the hemorrhagic stroke. When does a CT scan become positive? Small infarctions are difficult to visualize by CT scan with large ischemic strokes. CT abnormalities are usually evident after 24 to 48 hours hours, not immediately. CT scan can detect hemorrhages, subarachnoid hemorrhages, aneurysms, tumors and abscesses. MRI is more sensitive for a small infarct in all areas of the brain including cortex and brain stem. Diffusion weighted MRI have high sensitivity for identifying ischemic stroke within minutes after the onset. What's the MRI funding in infarction? In ischemia there occurs poor perfusion only with no other abnormalities that is seen in MRI. The perfusion techniques Xenon CT and PET scan can quantify cerebral blood flow. They are useful for determining the arterial stenosis and planning revascularization. Single photon emission tomography and MR perfusion techniques can detect relative 
cerebral blood flow combining ct angiography perfusion imaging with non contrast ct scan give detailed information about ischemia ct perfusion can measure the ischemic area accurately accurate measurement of the ischemic area makes it possible to select patient for thrombolysis thrombectomy or other planning angiography is the gold standard for identifying atherosclerotic stenosis it excludes the aneurysms reveals vascular occlusions and the tissues at a risk of infarction angiography can also identify vasospasm intraluminal thrombi fibromuscular dysplasia and av fistula treatment of the ischemic stroke generally its medical support thrombolysis antiplatelet agents anticoagulants and neuroprotection treatment of cerebral edema 5 to 10% of the patients develop cerebral edema mannitol and osmotic diuretic to reduce cerebral edema number 2 water restriction but hypovolemia should be prevented by giving isotonic fluid because hypovolemia may worsen infarction craniotomy mark Rapidly reduces the mortality. Increased intracranial pressure causes brainstem compression. Requires emergency surgical decompression. Treatment of the blood pressure. Blood pressure should not be lowered precipitously. Why? Because lowering the blood pressure would precipitate ischemia. When should blood pressure be lowered in ischemic stroke? The blood pressure should be lowered in ischemic stroke in myocardial ischemia to reduce the workload in malignant. hypertension or if blood pressure is more than 185 by 110 and thrombolytic therapy is needed which medication is preferred to stabilize heart rate and decrease blood pressure in stroke beta 1 adrenergic blocker for example asmolol the antiplatelet agents aspirin is the only antiplatelet agent that is effective in the treatment of acute ischemic stroke use of aspirin within 48 hours of the onset of a stroke reduces stroke recurrence risk and mortality so how does aspirin acts what's the mechanism of action aspirin inhibits the formation of thromboxane a2 and thromboxane a2 aggregates platelets and causes vasoconstriction so it's a platelet aggregator and vasoconstrictor the thromboxane a2 and aspirin aspirin inhibits it how does it inhibit thromboxane a2 aspirin inhibits cyclooxygenase enzyme which is required for the formation of thromboxane a2 aspirin temporarily also inhibits prostacycline which is anti aggregating and vessel dilator but this effect is only temporary recombinant tissue plasminogen activator is for ischemic stroke and the contraindications to the tissue plasminogen activators are head injury in the past 3 months GI bleeding in the past 3 week recent mi coma or stupor or platelet count of less than 100000 hematocrit less than 25% or a glucose less than 50 or more than 400 mg per 100 ml endovascular techniques a large clot in a major vessel like middle cerebral artery internal carotid artery or basilar artery cannot be removed by iv recombinant tissue plasminogen activators alone intra arterial injection of recombinant tissue plasminogen activator pro urokinase given in a major cerebral artery internal carotid artery middle cerebral or basilar within 6 hour of the onset of a stroke dissolves the clot this is not approved in usa number 2 endovascular mechanical thrombectomy the endovascular mechanical thrombectomy restores the potency of blood vessel in 50 to 60% of patients if done in 8 hour of onset of a stroke intravascular revascularization is fda approved if done within 8 hours of a stroke it can be done even if the patient received prior rtpa therapy